for me, the last three days of the month, I cannot hear. Okay. Okay. Um, Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, so um, the next agenda item is the new uh, new business upcoming program and events. Uh, we had a park advisory board meeting, um, I want to say May of 2012. So I, I just started a fresh new agenda, being that it's a fresh new board. Um, so that's why that thing is on here from previous agenda items. Um, so from here on out, there'll be old business discussed, but since the days are our first meeting as this board, um, there's no old business. So I did um, attach to your agenda or have out there our upcoming programs. Um, we, we start basketball Saturday, opening day. Uh, we have 27 teams. Uh, we have waiting lists on certain divisions, but it all seems to be going really smooth. I'll talk to you again, I guess, in February and tell you if there were any hiccups. But everything seems good. Uniforms have been handed. Officials have been scheduled for the um, first um, week of games. So everything seems to be moving along. I think for that and for that side, you have to watch. You all have uh, children playing in the league. So any problems that you were aware of or know of, that's, that's always good. Um, and then the upcoming program, uh, registration for uh, baseball and softball, starts February 1st. So these flyers have been approved by my supervisor. They're going out to publishing. Um, I'm requesting 2,000 flyers. Um, and we usually give them out to the local schools. How many? 2,000. Uh, we give them out to the local schools. So and then the registration information. And that's just uh, basic information. There's a lot of parents that come in that are new to the sport and they have questions. And it helps us um, you know, provide customer service so that they have something to reference, something to look at. And you always get the questions of, uh, well, no one told me that. So that's why I try to post everything on our website. Uh, I try to always have this information on the bulletin board. And when they register, the staff has been instructed to hand out the registration. Uh, information sheet. So if you do register, you don't get one. Let me know. <laughs> let me know who registered you. Um, Are you gonna say? Oh, we didn't get it to her because we already knew. She <laughs> has it. <laughs> okay, so that's the upcoming program. The other program that I have not um, created the flyer for is our uh, spring egg hunt event. Uh, Felix. The last two years has volunteered for that event. Um, it's actually come out, we've had great weather. It's come out really good. We do it on the field. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. It was my, you know, my first year here. Um, I think it was two weeks uh, into my, um, 
my start here and it was an egg cut event we did it, we combined it with opening day. Uh, and it, you know, we had, because of the built-in audience, it was a really great program. Uh, the last two years we did, a, you know, tents, um, balloons, music, games, egg hunt out in the field and I really enjoyed it. I don't know if some of you participated. Did you bring your girls back? No. Some of you participated. Um, I think it was a successful event. Um, and this year, it just happens that opening day and Easter fall on that same weekend. So I'm looking to combine the event again, unless you feel it should be different. Normally, they ask us to do the event the Saturday before Easter, um, so that families in the community that maybe don't have the resources to provide an egg hunt or their families can participate in an activity um, basically the day before Easter. Well, my opinion would be uh, combining. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you already have an audience and you have how many kids up there, you know what I mean? And, yeah, and well, last year there was 41 teams. Yeah. So, so, you know, you know I, I'm sure that was a help of our, our, our local council. <laughs> And, you know, uh, what, what was that again? <laughs> I, I said that uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that with the, the, the help of our local councilman and, and you know, maybe our LA 32 and the council, which really doesn't like to help, you know, the park, I have no idea why <laughs> this taxpayer money should be helping this, this park, which is right across the street from where they have their meetings. We could actually maybe combine it. What's that girl thing Chris and I, Chris and I talked about it, um, and we've had, you know, a decent turnout. And Diamond One is where the opening day happens, and that's usually done. Starts at nine, usually done by eleven, and our event is usually eleven to three. So we can just, you know, half of the field will we'll have the jumper, and we'll have the tents, and we'll be ready to go. And as soon as we wrap up this, the staff will just move over here and start the egg hunt and the coloring contest and face painting. So I'm kind of excited because it's going to be a full day of activities. And, and uh, I mean, you already have a case here. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, and then with all the parents being out there, like, oh, just... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought it was a great idea. I was excited. I told Chris, and he's like, we're going to have to buy a lot of candy, a lot of eggs. So we can do this. Um, and normally we have exhibition games, so more than likely we won't have games that day. It'll just move straight over to our Easter event. We'll already have the PA set up. Or you know what would be nice to do? If you move the Easter event to this site and you have two fields going at the same time, just the real ones. That's a possibility. The only thing is that the staff's Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, but how much, uh, you know, I mean, how much staff do you need for that game? Well, we have to chop the fields. Uh, we have to have the umpires out there and someone monitoring. So. I'm sorry, did you hear that? The last two years, it's happened on opening day also, you said? No, the first year it happened. It's really the, it's the, it's the, it's the sat you know, Easter Mugura? Yes. Yeah. So it's always a Saturday before mm -hmm. Easter. Yeah, because I attended um, last year and the year before. So, I wasn't sure if last year was also opening day. Yeah, yeah, no. It's always a Saturday before Easter, and um, normally we do open it day the second um, Saturday of the month, second or third Saturday of the month. So, it, when I looked at the calendar, I was like, oh, Easter is the next day. Yeah. Um, yeah, personally, I like to set up the game last year more than the year before that. Having kids of different ages, I think the setup was different last year. A little bit. The Maybe setup as far as the tents, because usually I recycle the fire. Oh. The, the setup of the, the relay races and the um, activities. The activity. yeah. I think it was really real similar. Mm -hmm. Maybe the jumper, because we paid for this year, we yeah, paid for yeah. a, a generator, where last year they wanted an extension cord. And it was um, yeah, it was just cost a little more money, but yeah, we did move the, mm -hmm. That was the one difference. We moved the um, jumper closer to the event, out of the dirt. <laughs> I think you were there when I was arguing with the guy. Yeah. He didn't want to, yeah, he was just like 100 feet of extension cord, that's it. Okay.
Okay, so um, green light on the. Are we, for like events like this, can we serve as staff? Yes. I need to like, help out and to. That's why I recruited you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are always here anyway. Congratulations. <laughs> Like, now I know why he's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, Isaac was, <laughs> Isaac was awesome my first year here. I mean, we had uh, sprinkler heads broken and puddles, and he was out there with, give me a rake. Give me some more dirt. Could have started game on time. Give me some chalk. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a coordinator who was out on FMLA and wasn't here, and so it was me. And I'm a program director. I don't officiate or, like, Um, the flyer for the event will be posted up online as soon as I get it going. We also have an upcoming program. It's the Alley Kids program. Um, it's free classes. Registration. I had set registration for uh, January 6th. I like to do registration at least two weeks before the actual classes start. However, when you're relying on someone else to provide you with the schedule of classes and the hours that um, are going to be given to you, it's a grant program. Uh, you can set the schedules all you want, but if you don't have the information, you can't put it out there. So I did get um, some of the classes that were awarded to us, but they didn't tell me if they were giving me additional hours. So as soon as I get that information, I'll post it online, I'll put flyers up. These are free after-school programs. Um, it's called the California Block Development Grant. And what it is is uh, funding for after-school programs that happen between Monday through Friday between 3 and 7. So a lot of parents are like, why aren't these classes offered later? It's strictly for after school uh, hours. They can't, you know, they can't happen after seven. They can't happen on weekend. Um, so I have a few classes um, that I was given, uh, mainly art because their gym is unavailable right now. Um, there are I think, two dance classes. Hi, Lulu. So as soon as that information is available, since you are part of the park advisory and I have a park advisory email, I'll send it to you, and then you, you know, you can forward it to your friends and family. You can also um, help me spread the word. It is first come first serve. Classes are limited to ten kids um, per class. It's one instructor. Do you have um, I will. As, as soon as, uh, what I want to know is if I'm able to add my own classes. They gave me, uh, they gave me about four classes, and last semester I got four classes plus additional 20 hours. So we had guitar, and we had ballet, um, so it's just a matter of finding out if I have the funds available to hire more instructors. Uh, right now I have a, a drum instructor trying to get um, a set of drums. drum pads that are required. And yeah, so uh, depending on how many hours they get, um, that's how many of our classes we have. Um, any, anything else I just discussed? Um, I, I have an idea. You, you said we could actually help or get the parents on the uh, schedule. Uh, how would you feel about uh, starting a flag football league? A flag football league. What would be the season? The um, summer. The summer. So we have, you know, we have the stallions that have the field majority of the time. And if we don't have the stallions, then we have uh, SNL programming. SNL mm -hmm. and the stallions will probably be 90% of the time. And the Saturdays will love that the fact that they're able to recruit from that that, 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 that brings more kids to the park, keeps them off the street, and they ask if they especially during the summer, and football's more popular. I'm waiting to hear on this now. Um, so just the challenges with that is that we have multiple leagues during the summer. So I have SNL in the evening, which offers uh, softball and uh, basketball at the same time. 
And then we have the Mighty Mike Division, Mighty Mike and Kiwi Division, which is in the morning on Saturdays and then Tuesdays, Monday and Tuesdays. Um, when we offer additional programs, we're tapping really into the same kids. So I'm not saying that there's not a possibility it can happen. I can put the flyer out there and see if there's actual interest. Just take registration forms. Um, but you are asking, you know, we have summer camp, we have uh, SNL, football, I mean, football, basketball, softball, and then the Mighty Might. So it's kind of stretching us a little thin, as it is the summer is our busiest months. I mean, there's some days I'm here for field trips at 8 and I, you know, I'm working SNL till 11. So I can put the interest out there and see if it's something that'll bite. Uh, I am worried that the stallions might think we're trying to step on their toes, but well, it's like the Their youngest kids are okay, right? Yeah, I, I don't see how they would see that you're trying to step on their toes. You know, they can see where they can park and this is where they can park. <laughs> So why don't you just like if you were to go that route, move it back where it's like say end of May to when SNL begins. Our yeah. well, cause baseball finishes in May, so that's what I'm saying. Right between baseball finishing and SNL, there's about a six week time frame, eight week time frame. The SNL started when was it out? Maybe about a the week first week of uh, yeah. We weren't even done July. with um, baseball, with baseball yeah. when it started. And I'm going to go for that. Did you start your learning? No, because our evaluations were like right at the same time as baseball was ending, and we had our finals, and then I'm on the sports court, so then we have to do the outside tournaments too. So everything was everything was happening at the same time, and I can't say, like, oh well, no, I can't do that. Like, you just have to figure it out. And I was soccer. Yeah, it's, it, but it's always like that. Summer is the busiest month. The only time that we're able to program on our own is summer, but since SNL's been here, they tell us what to do. Why don't you get rid of SNL? No, no, no. How do you expand SNL so that they don't limit our teams? That's what we want. Because our program is way bigger. We have 27 teams during the summer. You know, we have 40 teams. No, and I, and I do like and it's out. It's out. We're, we're actually real lucky to have that program here. Yeah, and, yeah it's, exactly. And, and I, I think we could actually be able to maybe pull in about another 100 kids. We can, yeah. and there's some parts that don't use all the resources and like the shit word, like, you know, you guys are successful, we're going to get you more. But we don't really have the same. I mean, there's some parts that struggle to get one team, two teams. We're fighting because we don't have enough space. Are we able to, in regards to SNL, are we able to advertise or put up flyers in those parts of the studio and get those kids here? Yeah. And maybe eventually they like it here and then they'll just stay here during regular season stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. The only problem is, is with our own homegrown kids, we don't have enough. We don't have enough to accommodate. This year, I don't know, those of you that signed up for SNL, it was like a concert. Yes. Literally. Waiting. Yeah. It was two hours, and we were completely full in every single division. Two hours. That was nice. And the waiting out there. Yeah, and I literally, yes. Thank you, Marie. I had nightmares that night. I was thinking, like, there's going to be two lines when I get to the park. I'm supposed to sign. So what I did is I was like, you know what? There can't be anybody there at 6 a.m. So I came over here at 6 a.m. I uh, put a sign that starts here, and then I went and had breakfast and came back. But there was, when I got here, there was already, I think, four people in line. Fortunately, fortunately they were all... They're, yeah. they, they were where they were supposed to be. <laughs> they were well, I, got here, I got here a little late. By the time I got here, it was like, I'm not like, forget it. I'm, I'm not even going to stand in line because it's not worth it. Because I'm not going to get a number. I'm like, <laughs> it was insane. I mean, and, if, yeah, but we're limited to how many teams you can run in. When we run our own leagues, we're not, we, you know, we, we're limited as far as just because, like, this year we had 27 basketball teams. Last year we had 25. Ultimately, you know, we want to get up into the 40s, but of course we would need the support of Wilson, we would need more gyms to practice in. 
because as it is now accommodating 27 teams to practice, well, we have a full schedule. We asked, um, they didn't respond, so now we're asking for Wilson's outside courts. It's a matter of everybody working together, wanting to, and also our parents and participants being respectful, not leaving a mess, because you're less willing to uh, permit out your facility if every time you know you lock up it's trashed. Well I guess I want some that on mine because it, it that's the way you find it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well we, we were lucky enough to get four dates at Wilson. So we're playing uh, the older divisions are playing uh, four Saturday dates at Wilson. Um, and that alleviated some of the gym time here. The SNL one you went to work that was good that worked. It was back here, and I was in the office uh, registering, so I don't know how far back. Do you know? Oh, no, way back. I was an hour, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And do they, can they just fill out an application and leave? And mm -hmm. it, so they can have to leave it? Can they have to be right there? Yeah, they go to the line, and they said that they could only register their kids. Remember back in the day when we used to go away tonight for those uh, metallic tickets? <laughs> 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 well, I heard that there was a lot of people trying to sign multiple kids that day. It was your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes? That's all I need to know. Yeah, uh, those people pissed off. But, uh, yeah, like, I think Christian went up there. I was just saying, because if I'm um, to do it again, I mean, I will volunteer, I'm not going to play else, but just kind of be. Like staff kind of monitoring one kid or something. Yeah, we were literally using three computers, uh, all three computers in the office, and then they were just dropping the registration forms with me, and I was doing the mass registration. So the two hours and we were full. So if we get, um, you know, I'm going to always push for more um, funding and more uniforms. Um, I mean, I've had Christian say, you know, if we can't get officials all in front of the shape. I'm saying like here, in, in your office here. Mm -hmm. Are they given out or just a few people? Somebody wants to take one, they can take one. We usually give them out to the coaches. So for example, once these, once we get these in, uh, the week of before the first, mm -hmm. every single team that plays will get a staff, um, and then the schools will get, um, you know, 500, 800, depending on what schools. We try to get um, Sierra Park. Uh, we've done Huntington Drive, but uh, Rose Hill sometimes is a little tough. That uh, we do Multnomah, uh, Sierra Vista, and I want to tap into uh, All Saints. <laughs> Uh, yes, the one right behind three. No, it's uh I'm not even drive. Oh, okay. I'm gonna <coughs> The thing is with our with our programs, I think the only one that really suffers with enrollment, everything else is generally waiting list. Uh, basketball's huge, baseball's huge, soccer is the one that um, suffers. Everything else we have very successful enrollment rates. Of course, expanding. But soccer suffers because of Starwood. They play at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. The same time. Yeah, yeah, we're tapping into. So, push, 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 yeah. so I think that, I think then we should keep Careful, careful, because when I first got here, that was a rumor. Jennifer wants to get rid of the signs. I'm like, oh my god, I just started. I don't even know who the signs are. <laughs> uh, it's just funny how, how you see them like kicking your kids out. Like, hey, yeah. kick the ball over there and park it. Like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, when you guys have soccer practice. Huh? Yeah, I mean, there are kids. There are community kids. So, it has to be a mutual respect and understanding for 
it's all recreation. Uh, um, really quick. So here's Diamond 2. When I first started coaching here, I understood that the Stallions had from half the field that way toward Eastern, and that this was available. Is that not the case now? No, now they do both sides. The, the whole field. Okay. And they have those kids too. You know what? I have been seeing their numbers. The yeah. first year the field was was crowded, and then this uh, this last year it wasn't too bad. And then this this current year, it was you know so definitely you could move well, them. When over. I started coaching here about what, four years ago, uh, they had that day. That was it. And, and the last time in on Eastern, that was that was their territory, about halfway this way, and that's where they went. And they had way more kids back then. Yeah. I mean, we can. I can. I can definitely fight if our if our program numbers increase and we need the field. I can definitely at least for practice time. Um, however, I mean, something that was completely out of my control was the expansion of SNL, the extension of it, and you know they they're saying that I didn't allow them to have the field, and it was like we were having games and we have practices and we're going to have playoffs. It's not, it's not my field to say yes, you can have it or you can't. It's the program. Um, so, I mean, he was like, hey, what's up with that? I even, Officer Morales even came to say, what's going on? Why are you taking the field away from the standards? And I said, it's not me, it's the program. You know, the mayor's program is being extended and we're being asked to not permit out the field to make our programs a priority or their programs a priority. That's all it was. That's one of the reasons we need to work soccer field into a synthetic field. Mm -hmm. Because then that eliminates half of the standings anyway <coughs> to a practice or that in a situation like that. And then once the field synthetic, you now we just work on the scheduling for soccer to be able to I would be happy with the easy. rocks and grass. Yeah. I really would. <coughs> I really would. Um, and it looks like they're gonna put in a lot of work on this field. Um, I'm just hoping that people, I mean, I still get people on the field and it's messed up. It's mm -hmm. messed up. Thank you. Thank you. We actually should the lights off. It's called the field. 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 Yeah. Oh, city park or county park? The city park. Yeah, uh, really Los Angeles is state. Yeah, it's state, but Nike, they're talking to Nike right now to actually make those other three fields into a synthetic because the main one, the stadium size one, is already synthetic. Mm -hmm. now they want to artificial, now they want to make the other three. Yeah. That's, that's you, right? Mm -hmm. That's you, right? I don't work for Nike. No, I'm saying, but <laughs> you know, working for the city, that, that's, yeah. that's not for us. Felix, I know the depart our department, they have, you know, they have partnerships and they also have their grant writing. And I know that our department goes after these grants, but they also have the selection process as far as uh, who gets what, you know. Um, I know we complain about the, the state of our park, but there's a lot of other parks that are in more submission. Um, and we are, I mean, definitely, I've seen improvements. Um, when I when I got here, it, you know, there was things that was like, oh, things to be fixed. And slowly, like I said, they came in the gym, they redid the walkway, uh, they redid our floors. So there have been improvements, and right now they're working on the field, and I think definitely a squeaky wheel gets oiled. You know, so when I'm sending constant emails, like, the lights are out, there's gophers on the field, you know, there's the pathway is dark, uh, you know, skate park needs to be repaired. They, they listen, but it's all about equating funds. You know, if they don't have the money for it, and there's 10 other parks that also need it. I would also say that one of the great things about having PAPS is the whole point of them, right, is that you get the people that utilize the park, coaches, parents, whatever, to really create that critical mass to prioritize what should be done at that facility. So it also helps Jennifer and her job when you have, you know, the back end of the path saying, hey, this literally really needs to happen, it makes it easier on her. It's not just a director at some park, you know, shooting an email off. 
it's actually the people who are using it. That's why it's really important that the PAP keeps going and has the energy and really starts to think about things like whether it's synthetic, synthetic soccer field, you know, whatever it is. Um, that's really the, the benefit of it. Um, but it's really important that there's and just advocacy. Un- yeah, just understanding that uh, the control that I do have is the program. The program and the schedule, everything else is, would be requests. Um, and then management does what they do. Can I make a comment right now? Um, I don't know how many of you are aware or if you did the survey that the Record Parks had out. If you were to the website, a survey would pop up. Did anybody do that survey? No. Because it's still on. They had it up for some while. They still, they have it and I actually bought some hard copies of the survey. And I think, um, well, I didn't read it in the I actually made copies. Oh, you have some ha- No, I made copies of the how to for you guys to get there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but it's it's been up for a while. Um, they said it was going to be to the end of the year, but I went on it today, and the survey is so long because I wanted to make sure that I gave you up-to-date information. Oh, yes. If you haven't done the survey, if you could do it, this is um, the Breckham Parks is doing in order to get feedback um, that money. from the residents with the Dr. Seti money that you said, that, you know, Dr. Seti making Breckham Parks. Yolanda, I'm going to, um, you know what, I just realized we just skipped on public comment because it's completely off-subject. Oh, so, um, I was thinking about, you know, what you yeah, said yeah. about the, you know, the the wheels that go get, you know, get oil. So I was just want to tell you guys to go online and put in your input on that. So I do have information for you guys on that. So um, in public comment, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, you can talk about it. And I actually don't have them with me, but I printed them mm-hmm. up. Yeah. But um, if you fill them up today, I'm going to deliver them to Figueroa. So, so, uh, so uh, future agenda items. Um, is there anything... Okay, so I'm going to bring up the egg hunt uh, in the next meeting. Hopefully I'll have the flyer done and you can help brainstorm as far as... We are, I feel like we already tapped out with the businesses uh, asking them for donations for a Breakfast with Santa event. But if you guys can think of any creative ideas, maybe um, saving eggs. Like if you guys are cooking, saving eggs from here to Easter so we can make a mess on the field. No. <laughs> so we can have a little bit of a mess. Well, we're going to rob the cannibals.